Hi, my name is Scott Givens with Browsers Bookstore in Oregon, and today we're going to take a look at uh, parts of a book, and we're looking at the edges today. Might seem kind of boring, but there's actually a lot to talk about, so let's get started. Okay, well, let's start with the basics. Here's a book. This is my daughter's library book. It's supposedly very good. She recommends it highly. The part everybody knows is the spine, right? This is where you open the book. That's the spine. These other parts have a funny name. It's called the forage. It rhymes with porridge, but it's spelled for, F-O-R-E, edge. But don't say forage, because then you'll sound like you don't know what you're talking about. Forage. This is the top forage on top of the book. This is just the forage, and this is the bottom forage. Very complicated, but we're doing good so far. Let's look at some more complicated books. Okay, so let's go into more detail about the spine. Here's your spine again. The top of a spine, it's not called the top, it's called the head, and the bottom of the spine is called the tail. In older books or fancily bound books, you've got these little uh, things here. These are called raised bands. There's a little rope underneath here. In the old days, it was required with modern book binding. You don't have to have them, but they still look kind of cool. In between the raised bands are these little guys here. These are the panels or spine panels. Now we're going to take a quick break of this book and show you back to my daughter's book. The spine of a dust jacket it doesn't have, you know, obviously raised bands. This part of the dust jacket spine is called the spine panel. And this right here is also called a spine panel between two raised bands. So if you, if you hear that term, you got to make sure which one people are talking about, it, whether it's the dust jacket or just part of the spine of a book with these panels on it. Um, in between the panels, sometimes you're going to find spine labels, which in this book here, this kind of barely has raised bands here. Uh, again, in the older days, spine labels where you'd have the, the author and the title um, were often printed on a different color of leather. Uh, in more modern books, the spine label will sometimes be printed on paper and then just paste it, especially for a cloth bound book. Um, and spine labels sometimes are just painted on for more modern books also. Sometimes you'll have very decorative uh, work on the spine. All sorts of stuff can be done with the spine. We could make a whole video just on spines probably, but that might put you to sleep. But now let's take a look at um, the edges of the pages. So the page edges that we're all most accustomed to are where they're all smooth. Okay, you can run your hand across them and they're even with the side of the book. These are called cut pages. They're all been they've all been trimmed, so there's a nice smooth edge. Pages weren't always that way. Um, and again, kind of like the raised bands we talked about. The the other way to do it is to have uncut edges where see how they're all rough like this okay in the old days that would come from you fold up the paper and then you just don't have a chopper to trim it nowadays you do but people still like the feel of um uncut edges i personally think they're great i have a good time with them and so there are a few ways you can do that there's uh the most common way is probably the forage and the bottom forage being uncut, the top edge being cut. This one has kind of a rough cut on top, but a very bad, very, not bad, but very much uncut on the edges. This one's going to be more common. You see the forage and the bottom edge are uncut. The top edge is cut and the top edge has been, <clears throat> the top edge is gilt, which means it's got a little, very thin layer of gold on it keeps the dust off and makes it look pretty. It's a very practical thing to do. Modern books. Let's go back to my daughter's book. This is a great book, apparently. Uh, once again, you've got the bottom and the top edge cut. This uh, kind of machine uncut look here, this is called a deckled edge. Uh, it was pretty common in the middle of the 20th century amongst book club books. Uh, nowadays, nowadays people still like to have it for, again, for that, that texture, that feel you get that's really fun. Um, and also just the way it looks when it's on the shelf. 
and uh, there's one difference, or there, there's one term you'll hear a lot, which is unopened. And the difference between a page that's uncut and unopened is this. These pages are, you can flip page by page by page until you get to page 89, where I currently am. I don't know why I have a duck, we should have a beaver bookmark in here. If anyone wants to send me a beaver bookmark, please do. Once you get to page 89, what you'll see is I haven't opened the pages yet. Okay, can you see that? These pages have never been opened before. The book has never been read. So what you do when you're reading it, it might seem scary, but you get your little book knife, okay, and you open it. So now even though I cut the pages with a knife, the pages are still uncut, but they are opened. So that's the difference between uncut and unopened. Other stuff you can do with edges, and these are mostly the cut edges that are smooth. Uh, one pretty common thing to see is when the edges are, there's just a simple layer of uh, uh, paint or ink on them. This is called stained, okay, and this one has stain on all three forages. Something more common that you'll see for modern books is a stain just on the top edge. Um, and sometimes this stain or even the color of the stain can be important to determining what edition of a book it is. I know one of Steinbeck's uh, novels is like that. One step fancier than staining is to have a marbled edge. Okay. This book has pretty nice marbling. Personally, this book is a little over the top for me. It's got this kind of stuff, and then you open up the book, and there's more than the page edges. This is too much for me, but whatever. People like different stuff. You don't have to like what I like. But that's marbled. Um, and then sometimes, you'll see, I don't have an example here, but instead of just stain, you'll see a spray, like a, like a can of spray paint, a spray paint. That was done for a while. Sometimes that's done on remainder books which brings us to something else. Poor Herbert Gold, Travels in San Francisco, Remaindered. What this means is the publisher of the bookstore just marked the top and sold this at a heavy discount. Sometimes you'll see Remainder Mark is a, a stamp of a, like a publisher logo. Um, Knopf has a stamp like that, and sometimes they'll, they'll spray it, and it will just look like a spray, like a paint spray on there. And those are all Remainder Marks. Remainder Spray, Remainder Stamp. Um, okay, let's look at some even fancier stuff to do though with edges. Okay, so a little bit fancier, quite a bit fancier than uh, stained or certainly remainder marks. I don't know how well this is going to show up, but if you can see the very intricate, in this case, um, carving into the edge of the closed page, the forage, and this book, it's on all three forages. This is called Goford. Nothing to do with gophers, by the way. Gopher edges um, in uh, 16th century. I, I've seen some that are very primitive, just like a guy just kind of eh, like that with his little knife, and that was the extent of it. This is obviously more modern. It's it's very fancy, very intricate, but this is a definitely nice level of tooling um, for a good binding. Something else that has, was done mostly in the 19th century, although it started to come back lately, is forage paintings. Oh, and this is interesting. Often you say forage paintings instead of forage paintings. Don't ask me why. Um, and so these are almost invariably on pages or on on books where the forage is gilt. So, and th this is kind of a sloppy one. You can see you can see there's something going on here. But when you take the book and you turn the pages, you can see a little scene, in this case some kind of Roman aqueduct. And so the painter would clasp the pages in, in, in this uh, format and then paint the little scene on there. And when you close it, you don't see it very well. A double forage painting, which you'll see once in a while, in this case, they did a good job of hiding it with the guild, the gilding. So for this book, it's a little stiff. Oops, it's upside down. For this book we have scene one, 
We've got some horses racing. I like these horses. And then scene two. This is a little bit harder to see. It's a guy fishing. He's angling. Here's the guy and here's his little fishing pole. So this is a gentleman's binding with horse racing and angling going on. So that's a double four edge painting. And last we're going to talk about the edges of the covers. Um, for paperback sometimes you'll see where the cover extends over the edge of the pages okay this is called it's called a lot of stuff um, but it, it's generally referred to as yapped wraps this is the yap here sometimes it's called French wraps um, sometimes I, I kind of like this where it folds together and connects right there often it's just straight though not not bent like that for hard covers sometimes on the edge here you've got decoration and then on the inside where it extends over the text block you can still see it when the book is closed these are dentels and again it just, it just makes it look prettier it makes it look nicer uh, something else that I don't have an, uh, an example of today is sometimes with thicker boards you've got it thicker in the middle than it comes down here. Those are called beveled edges. And they are just what it sounds like. And finally, back to my daughter's book collection. Here we go. This is something else you can obviously do with... Actually, this is two things you can do with um, book edges. One is a clasp, right? I better not look in there. She might have secrets in there. And then in the very old days when they had these big books that were very expensive, they were often chained to the library uh, or to the bookshelf. In this case, this doesn't change the bookshelf, but it does have a handy little pocket dangler. So this is something else as a chain you can have, or some other kind of accoutrement on the edge of the book. Well, that's about it. A uh, quick tour through the edges of books. I can talk about books for a long time, so I try to keep my comments on the videos really short. But feel free to play it back if you want to and hope you enjoy the video and we've got other videos on the website so be sure to check those out too thanks a lot